Hi, I'm Malia I'm from Wasamaki Ecosystems and today we are building a rocket stove. This is a really cool design that we like to use for cooking. Basically, you load up the firewood here and when it is working properly, it actually suctions air and shoots a flame up here and you just put a pot. Um, why we like using it is because there is not a lot of smoke coming out of it, so it's really just using the heat. And we make it out of clay bricks and a clay mortar that we make. And I will show you all how to do all of that. So the first step is we soak clay. So this is clay that we just dig up from the ground. Most places in Central have this sapote clay and um, we put it to soak in a bucket or a bin, well, a tub if we're doing larger projects. So we would just put it in the bucket um, with water and soak it overnight. Or you could soak it for even longer. And once that's soaked, we then use this drill with the long mixer blade and mix the clay and water to become this consistency. So it's a nice kind of smooth, not totally smooth, but it is workable. So the mix that we use to make the mortar, because we already have the bricks built, um, is usually two sand to one clay is the ratio. Um, of course, anywhere you do clay building or natural building, it will be different ratios depending on what the makeup of your clay is. So because we have mostly pure clay, we have to mix it with sand. Sometimes you don't even need to mix it with sand, you can just use it like that if it's a more sandy clay. So about so much clay, and then we pour the sand over it. The sand is just red sand that we stockpile. Um, we would mix it with our hands or feet. Um, but the drill works best for the better mortar because you want it to be as smooth as possible. We're looking for, it's like any mortar that you make with concrete. It's like a kind of toothpaste -y consistency. This is the consistency we're looking for. Something that's not too loose, but kind of stays form in your hand. So these are one of the bricks that we make. Um, we have a mold that makes two bricks at a time and it is a mix of clay, sand, and dried vetiver grass that we chop up. Um, vetiver grows really well in Trinidad, and you can constantly harvest from it and it will grow back. So that's what we use. It's a nice, strong um, grass. And we make two bricks at a time, pull it up from the mold, and then we make about however many we wanna make. Usually we make like six eight to a hundred at a time and we let it dry in the sun and within one and a half weeks when we flip it maybe every three days it will become dry solid brick like this and you can use it to build okay so to start with the rocket stove we put down four concrete bricks um four because this is the size it's going to be sometimes we end up moving the stove a little bit so, and also in case it floods or anything, you don't want your clay right on the ground. You kind of want it raised off by something that is, will not get weathered. And then we put a layer of just construction plastic. So it is a little easier to move if we need to move it, like this one we moved earlier today, so we can build our next one next it. And then you start off by creating the base of the stove with our bricks. So each brick needs to be wet um, with just the sponge so that, or you can just dunk it in a bucket of water so that the mortar sticks to it. Right. So you want to line it up with the base of your bricks. Okay, so the mortar just goes right up on the side. We always want to make sure that it's lined up. 
the finger indentations is just so that it, ho it has a more rough surface so that it holds the mortar better in between the bricks. So this first layer doesn't need to be super leveled because as we build it, we'll make sure that it's leveled throughout. So the bricks, we just stockpile whenever we get a chance. So if we just want to do a quick building project, we have them ready. Okay, so now we are starting to build up to create the dome that the firewood goes in. So basically the space on the inside is an L shape that the firewood goes through and then shoots the flames out from the top. So the difference in the color of the bricks is just because there's different color sands that we use to make it. So I think this one has sharp sand and this one just has red sand. All right, so we just kind of want there to be smooth so that the firewood loads in nicely. So we put this in, um, it's just an old shelf, but you could use um, BRC or anything strong. And this down here is gonna be open, um, clear, and then you're gonna load your firewood in on top here so that the air could circulate underneath and pick up the fire. And then again, you could use the mortar to build up areas that aren't as level because not all the bricks are the same height. I just dunk my brick usually. Okay, so let me just look, make sure it's leveled. Because we have that little bump in the stove. Kind of. You want to stagger the, where they join. So this first level joins here. So we'll put a brick in the center here and just use a half brick in the front. Make sure that there's no big drops or anything is much higher than the other. Of course, you could fix everything with um, the mortar. Okay, so this layer is just gonna come in a little bit more. So it'll be about here. So we start to make the dome shape so that when you load in the fire, it's like that half circle shape. So we're making it this height so that there's enough suction and flow to shoot the flames up above here. So we're actually going one set of bricks higher than what it is now. And then we'll put our burner on it. No, because that will throw it up. So after all the bricks are stacked, we're just doing a thin plaster um, to just cover all the cracks and crevices so it looks like a nice rocket stove. And we could have done this in a different color plaster if we wanted to. Um, sometimes we make like what's on the house a plaster that is with the limestone and sand but as we have extra mortar we can just use that and then if anything we could always come back over it when it's dry and do another colored plaster so you can start to cook right away because when you light it up 
it actually helps the inside dry faster. But there's nothing really else to do on it, just beside letting it dry. And then sometimes you might notice some little cracks and you can just make a little small batch of mortar and just fill in all the cracks. Sometimes we might just catch a vaps and want to do something artistic. So we might do some cool sculpture on top of it. But really this is the base and it's good like that for years.